So hey everyone, um, my presentation is about setting the mood and it is about how mood boards can be a huge help and keep things on track during game jam or anytime really. Um, they're super useful tools to use. So just some quick background on me. I've professionally been a UI UX designer for about five years now. Um, I originally went to Red River College to do graphic design and came out of it with a caffeine addiction. Um, I also only listen to the same pop punk music I did in the early 2000s while I'm working. Um, also one of those ridiculous dog moms uh, who won't stop talking about my cute little dog Umbra. Um, I'd also mention I'm into video games, but I kind of assume everyone here is to a degree. Um, so onto the actual topic of the presentation. Um, what even is a mood board? Basically, a mood board is a tool that helps to communicate concepts and visual ideas. In the context of a game jam, I'd probably say not to spend more than an hour on one. Um, for bigger projects, though, they can be quite in-depth and take more time. Um, okay, so why even make one? Uh, they can help you figure out a look and feel for the game you want to make without even creating anything yet. So it saves you time on creating assets. They also fit very well into the later part of the brainstorming process for when you're trying to come up with what you're trying to make and refining the idea some more. Um, in a team setting, it's also something everyone can look at and reference while working to have an idea of what you're aiming towards. I'd say they're even more useful right now, uh, just because everyone's remote and kind of like by themselves right now. So not being able to just like look over to the person you're working with beside you, um, you can't really do that right now. So it, it helps to have something to look at when you can't see other people's work as easily. So some of you might be thinking, but Jackie, I'm a programmer and I can't do art. Well, it doesn't matter because you don't need to be good at art or design to make a mood board. Um, if you can save a photo from the internet, you can make a mood board. It's similar to key art or concept art, but without doing the actual art. So mood boards are personally something I use a lot um, when I'm designing and I find them super useful and handy. Um, they help me nail like the style I have going on in my head. Um, this is an actual mood board. I used for my 2021 Famicay submission. Um, I had it up on my iPad while designing and I would like zoom in and zoom out of all like the little bits I liked to inspire things in my design. Even just looking at this, you can kind of tell it was going for like, like pretty geometric, mostly black and white kind of sci-fi inspired design. Um, personally for myself, I use VizRef on my iPad. It's about five dollars on the apple store another really popular one is pure ref and that's pay what you want so if you really can't afford it it's free um and that one is for pc mac and linux so also like hashtag not sponsored but i really love working in figma and it's a really great program to use if you're going to be collaborating with people remotely on a mood board um since the other programs don't have the kind of collaborative functionality, someone would need to make a mood board and share it out. Um, with Figma, you'd all be able to bring in and view the photos together in real time. Um, also, just as a side note, since it came out this week, um, Figma now has a thing called FigJam, which is kind of like a virtual whiteboard you can use. So you can like concept stuff and brainstorm together and both of them are free. So it's not a bad thing to try out. So, Let's bring up an example for why mood boards are good. Um, let's say that you wanted to create a space exploration game. Um, what could that like potentially look like? So it could look like this. Pretty cutesy, vibrant, unnatural colors, and inviting. So you have some like cute little creatures coming around and almost dreamy otherworldly landscapes, like really pushing the fun and sense of wonder aspect of space exploration. There's even like some little examples I put in there of like how you could do type and icons um, for how you do the UI. But this isn't the only way you could do space exploration. You could also do it in a different way. So what if the space exploration game was about simply trying to stay alive? 
under the hearts conditions of space and not knowing what could come and get you. Like really dramatic red lighting to push that sense of danger. Um, little hint of green to add some unease and be, be a complementary color to the red. There's lots of potential for the interface too. Um, Cause it could be like pretty cold and machine-like almost soulless to add to the isolation. But really what I'm trying to get at is that these are two very different interpretations of the same base concept. Um, not everyone's going to interpret it in the same way that you might. Um, so creating something that people can actually see and reference is extremely helpful and powerful. Um, mood boards can be easily tweaked if the style isn't working once reference is put together or the vibe you're trying to achieve isn't quite feeling right. Also, just as a side note, I probably wouldn't recommend doing a space exploration game for a game jam because uh, unless you can scope it down pretty small, it, it's, it's pretty ambitious. So just to kind of summarize, mood boards help you figure out the look and feel of the game without spending time creating or finding, which is perfectly okay too. There's tons of resources out there. Um, assets for your game. They can be pretty time consuming, especially in the really quick format that game jams are. So if you're not feeling super confident or you have not a lot of experience, um, so saving time on exploration is extremely helpful. And especially while being remote, it can help everyone decide on a direction together and head towards it. So. I hope this presentation was helpful. Um, and I just want to say have fun doing the game jam. It can be pretty stressful, but like the most important part of it is to have fun. So before I leave, I'll just do a quick shameless plug to follow me on Twitter at Jackie underscore Marky, where you'll most likely see more pictures of my dog Umbra, like the one here. Um, also, just mentioning, it's totally cool to message me privately on Discord or Twitter, or you can at me in the art channel on the Winnipeg Game Collective server about any art or UI questions, and I will try my best to help. So that's, that's it, and I just hope you guys enjoy the jam.